Hi folks, it's Lori, June 30th, 2015, 9.51 p.m. Central Time. I thought I'd give you a little update as to why I'm not uh, able to do a recording again tonight. I couldn't do one either on Sunday. They've been having quite a few different problems over at CERN with the beam. Tonight, um, they're shut down for 12 hours. I don't know from looking at their notes whether or not that was a planned stoppage or if they needed to address quite a few problems that I'll be showing you that they've been experiencing since the weekend. I'm getting uh, this information from excerpts of their daily morning meetings that they've been having since the 26th through today. Um, starting with the 27th slash 8th excerpt of morning meeting notes. Uh, looks like they were having a problem with some valve. Looks like they had beam dumps being triggered by uh, QPS. I'm not sure yet what that is. I'll try to figure that out. They were also having beam instability problems. Here's another uh, slide from their morning meetings where you can see they're looking directly at beam 2 is having a problem. Um, they're having some kind of losses with their um, with the beam. I'm not sure what would cause that, but they were experiencing problems, obviously, with beam 2. And here's another slide showing other problems they were sh showing with beam 2. Here's a uh, screenshot of their LHC panel uh, showing beam degradation, which is a decli declining from, as you go from left to right, you can see it's, it's coming down. That is apparently happening at the end of the batches. I don't know if uh, they figured out why it's doing that, but, but that's apparently... Uh, Part of the problem. And here's a summary from um, one of their morning minutes. Um, they were going to continue with what they're working on, which is called scrubbing. I'll get into that later. They are looking at trying to get their intensity level uh, back up because they want to get back into the higher energy and intensity levels coming uh, by September. And here's another slide. This one's from the 29th of June. Um, they've got uh, degradation that they're addressing on here. And they're saying it's from a, coming in at the end of the batches. And it looks like they were going to um, adjust the, the amount of injection that they were going to have coming into beam 2 because of the, the problems that they're having. Besides the beam problems, they're also having um, equipment problems. So you can see in this list here, it's just another excerpt of uh, vacuum valves, the cryo temp sensor, the collimator motor, the QPS controller. They didn't have a beam for a period of time. And um, I know that they also had a problem with uh, an electrical problem, something had tripped as well. Here's another panel showing uh, that they were having problems with beam stability problems. Uh, so that's just highlighted here on this screen. This is from this morning, uh, morning meeting. And these are also additional minutes or uh, notes from this morning's meeting. Uh, it's uh, their scrubbing notes. And with, this is what they're planning on doing today. Um, and it indicated that they were going to be out of uh, working on, on these different things so that they would not be having the beam running for a period of time. But in these meetings, I've been reading a lot about scrubbing. And I wasn't uh, sure what that is. I didn't want to just throw it out there. So I thought I'd, I'd look it up. And I found on a CERN site some information about the process of scrubbing after they've run their their protons in, in their vacuum chamber. And as it says here, it says, this, is, this picture is a simulation 
of the electron flux produced when the beam passes through the vacuum chamber. The lines show the electron flux, the colors, the density of the electrons. The higher the density, the brighter the colors. And then this is, you can read this um, yourself later. You don't probably want me to have to read it all to you, but it, it is a description of what they do. It's um, a process, the scrubbing is a process that they use to try to get out all these different electrons, apparently, that are left on the walls after they've done all these collisions. So they go back through to clean it out because if they don't, it apparently leaves what's called these electron clouds, and that can destabilize the beam. And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later. So they need to get rid of these electron clouds before they can throw uh, more proton bunches into the LHC. And so they've developed this scrubbing technique to, to get rid of, I guess, all these excess gas molecules from the metal and to reduce the rate of production of the electrons on the walls of the pipes. And then this next slide just explains um, the process of how they go about using these, these beams to circulate um, the, the bunches to clean out and scrub out these electron clouds. And I had found um, some information on the electron clouds because I did post on that on my G Plus account uh, last week when I saw it for the first time in one of their meeting minutes. Um, apparently, there's, there's an area where they believe that electrons could be, so they call it a cloud model. Um, they don't, the electrons don't orbit in a particular area, but they may orbit in a general location of an area, and they call that a, a cloud. And they explain it on here. Um, electrons can travel in lanes like a runner or on a track, and they can be anywhere in their lane. And those lanes are what are called the electron clouds. And that um, was based upon a an, an equation that Erwin Schrodinger came up with about the likelihood of where electrons would be found. And so that that was all kind of interesting to understand a little bit better as to what they were talking about when they were referring to this electron cloud is there you know, that they could observe in their measurements. Okay, now that I'm kind of back out of... Uh, where I feel a little bit out of my league. People are asking me at different times why why there's differences seen in the beams that I'm showing on, in the recordings. And just based on what I'm observing so far, it seems like it depends on three things, at least so far that I can figure out. One is the energy level. Lately, it's been at 450 GeV, whereas before the shutdown, it had been up to 600 um 6,500 GeV or 6.5 TeV. Uh, so it's a lower energy level right now as opposed to before. Um, the beam intensity is, also seems to have uh, an impact on what is being seen in the beam. Um, the beam intensity is, I had to go look that up so I could explain it better. It's measured in luminosity, which corresponds to how many particles, in this case protons, are packed into each beam. So the more protons that are accelerated along this 17-mile loop, the greater chances are that the two protons will hit each other head-on. Now, what we're actually looking at in the beam at this point, from what I understand, is not actually the beams hitting each other. It's the beam, the one beam, hitting one of the collimators. But it still is related to the intensity of the beam. I'm seeing a difference as to how it's, how strongly it's hitting that collimator. And the third area that I've noticed that there's a difference is the number of bunches. 
and they inject these bunches um, not not in a continuous stream they do it with a period of time separate I don't know if it's like 25 nanoseconds or if they increase it or decrease it according to 25 or 50 but they they don't just have it as a continuous stream and so this uh, paragraph that I found here about the benches it, it says here each proton beam at full intensity will consist of 2,808 bunches per beam and each bunch will, will contain 1.15 times 10 to the 11th protons per bunch at the start of a nominal fill and they're saying that's about 30 centimeters long. In 2015, so obviously that's this year, the LHC will be circulating around 2,800 bunches in each beam and each bunch will contain just over 1.10 to 11 protons. So I, I can only explain to you the differences that I'm seeing have to do with so far these three things that I, I've observed. So for example, this is before the shutdown, one of the um, screenshots I, I took of their LH C3 pa panel. It's showing you up here, if you look in the center area, uh, the energy level at that time was 6500 GeV. The intensity level um, was about 2.5 E plus 11. And if you look down in this middle graph on the left side, you can see the numbers where the beam level intensity is. So it goes on this uh, graph, it goes from 5E10 up to 3E11. So the beam intensity for the predominant period of the two graphs was about 2.5E plus 11 which is pretty high. So here's, here's an example of um, one of the screenshots I took at that time. This one was taken on my uh, central time at, on June 3rd at 1840.51 and it was two seconds into the video. And you can see, first of all, the quality of this beam. It, it, it looks more cohesive than it has been lately. Um, there seems to be more faces in these beams. Um, they're more, it's more of a white color as opposed to a lot of dark areas. And I have on here circled a face that I could sit clearly see. There are other faces in, more in the background that, that you can see if you um, want to play this video. But I'm just showing it for comparison's sake, um, not so much that you could see what's in this in this at this time. And then we go to June 9th. This is also before the technical stop. The energy level on this day was also at 6,500 GeV or 6.5 TeV. The intensity level at the beams at this time, if you look again here on on the left, you can see. It's uh, over three and a half. Um, at, go to the far right, and you can see at the time that I took this, it was about 3.86 E plus 11. And the benches, um, I learned to start making more screenshots of different panels. So I, once I figured out what I was supposed to be kind of looking at here, I was able to determine the, the number of bunches on this one, which the the videos prior, I, I hadn't figured out what I needed to look at for numbers. So here's the dashboard panel, and up at the top, it gives you the intensity, the proton bunches, the beam energy level, and the date and timestamp, Geneva time, which for me, this was still June 3rd at 1840. And um, you could see the benches on this, say, 39. But this is just a, what they call the dashboard panel. So on June 9th, 
uh, this is a, an example of what the beam overall look like. I do have the one in the right circle, and you could hopefully see a face in there that I see. The one on the left is the same photo. It's just not um, highlighted with the face that I see. But you can, again, just see the, the beam quality is, is different according to, I think, the energy levels, but much higher than recently. And then now we're jumping over to just yesterday, post shutdown and start up again. Their energy level, of, since they returned um, from the technical stop, has been only at 450 GeV. Now the intensity and bunch numbers have been substantially higher than they were before, but I feel like I'm not seeing as many faces. It's, it's and that has to be a direct result of the lower energy level that is is now being used. But here you can see this is another one of the LHC3 panels. It shows you the energy, shows you the beam, it shows you in this one the degradation that's going from the end of the bunches from the beginning of the bunches. Here's a, a picture of the dashboard panel. You can see at the top the intensity of the beam, the bunches of the beams, the energy level is 0.45 TeV, substantially less than before the shutdown. Um, and so I, I'm kind of, like I told you before, I'm learning as I go, trying to figure out which panels make sense to me and start learning more information about each of the areas on these panels. So that takes me to screen a screenshot again of the type of beam that you can see. To me, when it's at this lower energy level, it sort of reminds me of aluminum foil crumpled up and light is reflecting from it. The picture on the right is the same as the left. I just have it highlighted with a red tint of two faces I see um, versus what maybe you may or may not be able to see without them on the left. But that is that is uh, pretty much just because of the energy level. It, it's not that white color. It's more broken up looking. And that's about it, except if you want to learn some more about um, what's going on over at CERN, um, don't forget to check my YouTube playlist. I've got a section there that's called CERN and quantum theory related information where I have videos I've watched that I've liked that I think are pretty good. And then on my G plus uh, account, I've got a collection. Um, one is with the CERN beams that I, uh, photos that I think are maybe more clear or, or the larger faces. But um, I've also got in there the CERN and quantum theory related literature and videos that others uh, may have put together that I think are worthwhile to watch. Um, one of them is this uh, informal lecture given by Professor Terry Rudolph called Quantum Theory, It's Unreal. I thought it was a really good uh, video presentation. Um, he was giving a lecture to a class at Imperial College in London. He's pretty funny. He explains the, the quantum theory pretty well. Um, he gives a demonstration of some um, experiment he performed so that you could quote unquote see muons, which you, you can't see, they're too small, but you were able to see it passing by because of dry ice that they were using. So it's pretty cool. This other video that I watched is, is a pretty cool uh, video also in, called Albert Einstein, The Secrets of Quantum Physics. Um, that one was really good too. So both of these are in my um, playlist, uh, my YouTube playlist. And uh, just so you know, I don't really like uh, doing videos too much myself. Um, I feel a little uh, out of my league with this. I'm more comfortable writing and posting um, information and um, that's kind of why I don't do too many videos because really this whole project really isn't about me and wanting to be passed around as, as anybody. I, I'm just trying to draw attention to this 
whole thing that's going on at CERN. I'm learning as I go. I'm not qualified to, to tell you anything except to kind of pointing out information that I've found or I thought might be interesting or helpful to understand because it's teaching me also. But I do appreciate your interest and um, I would appreciate any comments you might have or suggestions. Uh, I like to make the videos more interesting, but like I said, I really don't know uh, how to explain what you're looking at, so I feel like I'd be taken away from just um, speculating. I, I don't think that would be helping. But if there's any other ideas or suggestions, you, you might um, feel free to post it down below. Um, click like or uh, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can while I'm trying to teach myself a, a field I've never learned about. So anyway, thanks a lot for all of your um, views and interest and questions and feedback. It's, it's, uh, it's been kind of fun as I've been trying to learn how to understand quantum theory and physics myself. Thank you.